Don't we have a bit to be doing? Hey, where'd you get to? Where'd you get a... Yeah, pineapple me. <laughs> there we go, that's it. Hey, are you like thirsty by chance? A little bit, yeah. Can you do the thing? Oh, I got you. Jared! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Jared. We haven't even started. <laughs> okay, okay. Hello everyone and welcome back to your favorite show for all things gaming and really tech related. Gen 2, I'm Garrett Bevins. And I'm Jonas Pilot. Now we have some awesome game releases to look at, so let's check them out. You see, we are all connected through the holy body. When you need only accept the sacred gift. What many have been waiting for, the Resident Evil 4 Remake is finally about to arrive. Whether you love the Resident Evil games or you want to jump in, make sure to check this one out, where six years have passed since the biological disaster in Raccoon City. Leon S. Kennedy, one of the survivors, tracks the president's kidnapped daughter to a secluded European village, where something's terribly wrong with the locals. Featuring modernized gameplay, a reimagined storyline, and vividly detailed graphics, Resident Evil 4 marks the rebirth of an industry juggernaut. Resident Evil 4 Remake releases on March 24th for PC, PS4, and 5, and Xbox X and S. So you want to be a criminal, do you? <laughs> Game on! Rock A City, a thriving metropolis with excitement buzzing from the Sandy Bay to the towering skyscrapers. But beyond the glamour, there's a fierce turf war raging on. After the demise of the previous crime boss, there's an open vacancy for a new king of Rock A City. But it isn't just you who's fighting for the throne. Choose your crew based on their skills and expertise, and execute daring missions with hopes of walking away with the cash, the turf, and ultimately, the crown. You can get Crime Boss Rock A City with its star-studded cast when it releases for PC exclusively on Epic Games on March 24th. A console release is planned for June of this year. Those sound great, so now let's look at some other gaming news. Have you been watching the HBO show The Last of Us and wanted to play the game for yourself? Maybe you have been wanting to play it for some time before watching the show, but don't own a PlayStation. The Last of Us Part 1 is finally coming to PC on March 28th. This also includes the prequel chapter left behind about Ellie before the game. Also, sadly, on March 27th, the Wii U and Nintendo 3DS eShop will be closing permanently. So, if you have these and want to quickly buy any games that you will lose access to, make sure to do that before that date. And now, that's all we got right now for news, so make sure to subscribe, like, and turn on notifications to not miss our future episodes. Now, let's watch my pack, Digital Digestion. And afterwards, everybody else's. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Digital Digestion. This week, we look into a hopeful character whose headstrong attitude keeps her and her friends alive in an unforgiving world of death and horror. This is Clementine from The Walking Dead. Also, I must state this, spoilers ahead for the whole entire franchise. Now, let's get into it. first meet Clementine as a child in Season 1 of The Walking Dead, a scared kid lost and confused in the new nightmare of the world that she lives in. After losing her parents and all the loved ones around her, she must adapt and get used to the new world that she now lives in, at the young ripe age of 8 no less. To help with her faith and trust in humanity, a friend and father figure named Lee helps Clementine navigate and stay alive through walkers and humans alike. However, with the loss of Lee at the end of the first game, Clementine is yet hardened again and challenged. Her beliefs are a bit more harsh and her outlook on life is a little bit more brash. She becomes a loner in a way and holds a firm belief that nothing good will come as working together as a group. Clementine is also a super smart kid and young adult. She knows that her parents are sadly gone and they will not be returning. She even asks Lee to lie to her to comfort her, giving her a false sense of hope. If we don't find them, we can go. But if we do, they come with us. Okay, that's the plan. On top of that, she's a huge moral compass for the groups that she's a part of. In season one, for instance, she disagrees and states her mind openly when the group wants to loot a vehicle which probably belongs to her family, full of good foods and clothing. Well, what if it's not abandoned? What if it is someone's? However, 
It is important to note that later on in the games, the player is in full control. The player can control how Clementine acts to the people and world around her. They can make her cold-hearted and aggressive, from her blackmailing and even killing members of her own group. And on the other hand, the player can also show compassion and try to be a nice person to have a non-violent outlook on a world full of death and destruction. To me, what makes Clementine so great is her transformation. From a scared and lonely child thrown to an unforgiving and violent world, to a strong, smart, and independent survivor that keeps her morals intact and fights for the best of her and what's left of humanity. And that does it for this week of Digital Digestion, and that was Clementine from Telltale's The Walking Dead. If you want to see any characters in the future, let me know down below who you want to see. Also, make sure to tune in next week as I have a pretty fun character that I want to cover for you guys. I'm your host, Garrett Bevan, signing off. See you then. My name is Gabriel Lozano, and welcome back to 10 out of 10, where we go over the best video games that are truly 10 out of 10s. Today, we're going to be looking at Halo 3. Halo 3 begins a couple hours right after the second game and begins with Master Chief crash landing on Earth and reuniting with Sergeant Johnson. As you play as Master Chief, you will fight through a group of aliens known as the Covenant. In the first two games, we learn that the Covenant is a group of aliens that are trying to activate massive floating halo rings found throughout the galaxy. They believe these rings are sacred and can lead them to eternal life. Unfortunately, this isn't the case. And in the first game, we learn that these rings are actually massive interstellar weapons created by ancient aliens to kill all life in the galaxy. In Halo 3, the Covenant discovers another massive artifact in space, but this time, it's not a Halo. It's something known as the Ark, and this Ark has the power to activate every single Halo ring and destroy all life in the galaxy. It is your goal as Master Chief to do everything in your power to not let this happen. As you play as Master Chief, you will shoot your way through a nearly 9 hour journey to save Earth and to take down the Covenant. You can drive many different vehicles, use different weapons, and even use power-ups you can find throughout the levels. If we look back on Halo today, the game looks old, but at the time, Halo 3 really looked amazing. Halo 3 was originally released in 2007 and brought many new ways to play thanks to the new Xbox 360. Halo 3 introduced bigger environments to play in, brand new enemies, vehicles, and even reintroduced the Flood, an alien parasite we haven't seen since the first Halo. Originally, Halo 3 was supposed to be the finale of the series, and it is no question why this game had a lot of hype around it. On release day, there were people lining up outside stores to get their copies of Halo, and everyone was talking about Halo in the gaming community. Halo 3 helped pave the way for future games on the Xbox 360 and really stood out in 2007 due to its massive following. The multiplayer servers were also an immediate hit with thousands of players playing each day. Almost everybody was familiar with Halo and YouTube was filled with Halo videos like Red vs Blue. I remember hopping on the game back in the day with friends and having a blast doing so. It is no question that Halo 3 had a major impact on gaming in 2007. Halo 3 was an amazing game that brought many new ways to play and a great continuation of the story of Halo. With Halo's amazing following, great graphics for the time, and the great story Halo brings, it's no question that this game is truly a 10 out of 10. Hello, my name is Evan, and welcome back to The Price is Free, the show where I find a fun, short, free game to play in an afternoon. This week, we are playing Post Mouse, a student-made game about a little mouse making deliveries, venturing out into the mysterious woods and mansion. The forest and characters you meet in the world are what really make this game amazing, where your small size matters with how you interact with the creatures a little bit. Like how when I talk to the turtles, I have to climb on a rock to be tall enough to even talk to them. Or how when climbing any tree or tall structure, you can usually find a bird to talk to up there. Running around in the environments themselves are fun and immersive, like climbing up the lichen or jumping onto the river rocks to get past the river. The platforming is integrated nicely. The controls, on the other hand, is where the game falls a little short. There were many times where I'd accidentally fall because the controls felt so floaty, which in turn made some of the parts a little frustrating. When I would have to make tight movements, but then it made me hard to do that. 
the one collectible in the game were the stamps. While I didn't collect all the stamps, the one I did collect were a cool little thing to look at. Just giving a little bit more lore to the world, which is always nice. I'm not for sure if there's a reward for finding all the stickers, but there was a little bit of a hint saying you'll get something after collecting them all. The setting for the platforming is truly magical, like exploring the bedroom of the old abandoned mansion, climbing up the legs of the table and along the mantle of the fireplace. Transitions are fitting when moving to the next area too, having to climb through a broken pipe to climb to the next part of the mansion. Some of the views that are set up are incredibly breathtaking for a student-made game. I would find myself getting lost at times, staring off into the distance and thinking about the world that I'm in, that these people had to work so hard to create. It just made the game feel that much more whimsical with the bright warm colors, the glorious views of things we think was as small or insignificant, but for a mouse, could be monstrous and mysterious. The puzzles weren't anything to rage about really, the majority of the puzzles were really just platforming and running back up if you fell from the janky physics, or having to just click buttons in a certain order, but they really spell it out for anyone playing. While the puzzles may not have been that complex, the sets themselves are pretty cool, like having to move a hospital bed to get to a higher area, or using ways to turn on a clock so you can climb the gears to reach the top. That is what really carries the puzzles. Thank you for tuning in this week for The Price is Free. Make sure to check out Post Mouse for a nice relaxing journey through the eyes of a mouse that can be played in the afternoon. Come back next time to see next week's free game of the week. Peace out. Unlike other organizations on and around campus, here, the students do it all. KNWT is a student-run and student-produced television station. To support this content, you can go to our YouTube channel at KNWT Channel 8. And watch the latest shows or even enjoy blasts from the past. Dude, it's so nice here. I know. Hey, are you like thirsty by chance? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Can you do the thing? I got you. Yeah. Gabe's. Awesome. Thanks, guys. The service around here is so nice. I know, right? Hey. Wait. What is today? Wednesday? Oh, oh no. dude, it's Wednesday. Gen 2. We have to film on Gen 2. Oh, dude, Lauren's gonna kill us. You think if we send a picture, she'll be okay with it? Yeah, dude. Okay. Oh, if we send her a picture, she'll be like, oh, I totally yeah. get why those guys aren't here I for filming. I got it covered. Here we go. Yeah, that Perfect. should, she'll totally forgive us. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome back to Mustard's Monthly Mayhem. My name is Jacob Mustard, and this week we are going to review the free game Fall Guys. Fall Guys was a sensation back in July of 2020, hitting over 172,000 players at its peak. I remember playing with my friends during the lockdown of COVID-19, and it was a lot of fun, so I decided to revisit the game almost three years later. Since the popularity of Battle Royales arose, this game takes a more family-friendly approach that doesn't use explosions and violence to create a very fun last man or team standing game. While most games top out at around 15 to 20 maps, Fall Guys comes in with 67 unique maps with 7 different categories. These categories are Race, Survival, Logic, Hunt, Team, Invisibine, and Finals maps. This gives the game a wide variety of choices to randomly assign each round so you are not very likely to play the same map two rounds in a row. I like that there are so many different maps and challenges that all have their unique spin on things. This allows for the game to stay fresh and more enjoyable for a longer period of time. With no offline modes, the choices you have are Solo Show, Day at the Races Solo, Duo Show, and Squad Show. If you can get a group of four friends together, Squads is definitely the most fun as you work as a team to try and complete tasks or finish races with more combined points than the opponents. Duos is the same concept as Squads, but with only two people and less overall scores, with the top X number of teams advancing per round until there's only one team left. These team maps can definitely be a make or break challenge as it requires you to put your brains together and work as a unit, which can be fun, but if you have one teammate that doesn't help, it can all go wrong. There are a lot of good maps in this game, but one of my favorites has to be Hexagon. This map was part of the original 2020 release and has survived this long as a finals map. 
While there are not too many bad maps, one that I don't like is Puzzle Path. This map tries to give you the maze feel as you're supposed to follow the starting point and figure out which portal to jump through to advance to the next section, but a lot of it seems like guesswork or follow the crowd, and if you're on the wrong side of the crowd you may default to last place just by positioning. I would not say that Fall Guys is an amazing S tier game that should be someone's go to game every night, but if you throw it in the mix every once in a while, you can still compete for the crown every match. With simple controls such as the analog stick to move, X to jump, and square to dive, there's not a lot to memorize giving everyone a chance to win. This is another game that has a lot of choices when it comes to customizing your jelly bean, with a seemingly endless combination of colors, patterns, face colors, and costumes, you can for sure make a unique character. Overall, Fall Guys is a simple yet fun game that allows you to enjoy the chaos in close quarters with 40 other players on each map fighting for the number one position to win the coveted crown. I give this game a ranking of 8 out of 10 as they have really stepped up the complexity of the map since the launch date while keeping them still simple enough for the casual to play the game. That will conclude this week's episode of Mustard's Monthly Mayhem. Make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications, that way you don't miss next week's episode of Gen 2. Hello, this is Gabe Chadwick with RPGs, where we look at some of the greatest RPGs of all time and look at what is good about them and what may be below average. Today, we're looking at Dark Souls 3. Dark Souls is a series that I've loved since 2015. The first Dark Souls was a great time that created a challenging but fair experience. It's a game series I love almost as much as it hates me. And in 2016, when Dark Souls 3 was released, I fell in love at first sight. Compared to its previous titles, Dark Souls 3 is a faster and more aggressive combat system allowing for a more twitch reaction playstyle that will put players to the test. When talking about previous games in the series, level design was a major factor within the gameplay loop. In Dark Souls 3, that takes a step back. Part of this is with the ability to teleport at checkpoints, also known as bonfires. This allows for easy traversal of the map that the other games just didn't have. This mechanic on paper seems great. With the ability to teleport, you streamline the game and allow new players to have an easier time and expand the player base. This however is a double edged sword because you lose that risk of sitting at a bonfire. In Dark Souls 1, if you sat at a bonfire, you could be potentially stuck in a horrible spot. Because if you sit at that bonfire, you could be making a big mistake. But with teleportation, that no longer becomes an issue. Now complaining that the game developers made something easier may sound stupid, but it's a Dark Souls game. It's built on being challenging. And by taking away a core mechanic of previous games, that just seemed to be too pampering. But when talking about Dark Souls, you can't help but talk about the bosses. They are the cornerstone of Dark Souls and especially Dark Souls 3 gameplay loop. The bosses in Dark Souls 3 are some of the best bosses in gaming. You have Gundyr. Abyss Watchers, and the Twin Princes, just to name a few. The quality of bosses start out slow, in the first third, but pick up in the latter half of the game. These bosses also allow for what I think is the best way to experience Dark Souls 3, and that is the ability to summon other players to your world, which allows for a more social and overall fun experience. Dark Souls 3, while being flawed, is an amazing experience and one negative aspect of the game has three positive ones to follow it up. Thanks for tuning in to RP Geeks and Gen 2. I hope to see you next week to look at the ethically questionable Monster Hunter Rise. Welcome back to Indiana Jonas, I'm your host Jonas Pilot, and today we're diving into Airships Conquer the Skies, a 2D shipbuilding game. So, let's get cracking. Welcome to Airships Conquer the Skies, Admiral. Airships Conquer the Skies is a 2D shipbuilding strategy game where you build up your armada from humble beginnings and adapt and evolve your fleet over time to conquer the skies. The main gameplay revolves around creating and building your very own ships from scratch, adding on new weapons, crew, armor, and components to shape the different ships in your fleet into different roles. Maybe you want to have small little screen ships out in front with little cannons or flamethrowers. Perhaps you want to create a fleet of bombers that sits high in the sky and wreaks havoc on your enemy's bases. Or maybe even creating a massive air battleship to dominate the sky with overwhelming firepower. 
This massive ability to completely change how your ships look or perform not only extends to you, but the AI that you'll be conquering as well. The combat can be difficult at the start to pick up and master, as positioning your ships well can be paramount to your success, but you might also have to adapt to what weapons your ships are fitted with. Each of the different AI factions will have their own types of ships, and some may completely counter the style of ships that you've built, forcing you to refit your fleet in a different style to better approach the enemy. But the AI are not the only ones you need to worry about. There are also monsters and bandits that can wreak havoc on your economy and your fleets. Killing these monsters can give you a massive research bonus, reputation, or even sometimes monetary gain as you slay these monsters. This can put your empire far and above others around you, giving you a nice head start for the next war. The newly updated diplomacy and age aspect of the game adds in a whole new layer to the game, with new diplomatic actions such as extracting tribute, forming research and trade agreements, non-aggression pacts, or defensive alliances, allowing you to diplomatically outmaneuver your opponents. Unique eras are also new to the game. As time progresses, new epochs will come and go, changing how the game is played, with some eras having massive cultist uprisings or an age of decadence that will make the world that you are attempting to conquer truly feel alive. Another great aspect of the game is the community. On Steam, hundreds of creators are constantly coming up with new mods to throw into your playthrough, from simple mods that add in a single new gun to complete overhaul mods that add in entire new armories, or even some meme mods that actually remove airships from the game, leaving only land ships to fight with. The community is also constantly posting their own ships that they have built that you can incorporate into your own fleet. From small corvettes to massive dreadnoughts, there's a ship to fill your needs. Airships Conquer the Skies has a near infinite replayability with different ships and different styles of play that you can take on, allowing you to have a completely different playthrough every time you play the game. Airships Conquer the Skies is definitely a game that I would recommend. KNWT for Hire is all about sharing a story, a message, and connecting the community. We cover a multitude of events, both within the university and Maryville. We roll in, we set up, and we capture. We're here to offer an experience, not only for those present, but for all. Hey, come here. Let me tell you a secret. This is very important. This week on Loosely Related, we've got Steffi Durandi and we're going to be talking about what it takes to run a theater around here and making fun sock puppets. So you should stop on by. Hey guys, I'm Lauren Liberty. And I'm your host Garrett Bevins. And we're here for Project Delta this week in the studio and we're going to be playing still our competition, but this week we'll be playing TAPS instead of VR, so. Or as it's normally called, Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, which yeah. it yeah. is very accurate if you're going to see from the following footage. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to do best out of five um, with decreasing value of money we're allowed to spend. My detector test determined that was a lie. <laughs> May the best player win. If you haven't watched, uh, last time we did this together, I got my butt kicked in every game but one. Yeah. So hopefully it's better for me, but, you know, hopefully it's on my side today. I'm the better gamer. We'll see. All right. I'm not the only one who saw that, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh. I accidentally passed it on to you. Well, uh, accidents happen. No, we're really... Oh, no! Accidents oh, happen. Oh, no! Uh, I, I'm glad I know no. how to play this game so well. Mine wasn't uh, moving at first, Steven. This is so stupid. And then we're just gonna... Oh, I'm at my limit. All right, so we're gonna let it play out and just see where we are. I think I might win just because of... Uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my guys, I thought were cleaning house. I don't think they are. Uh, fellas, what are we doing here? I think you oh, are... What kind of throws are these? So, um... How? <laughs> Whoa, 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 okay, this is stupid. I don't like this anymore. <laughs> um, I think you lost first round. This is stupid. This is not the best setup the that king? it could be. The king? Heck yeah, bro, it's gonna be me, JK. Uh, I, should put him I don't know I if should it would be. I put him in the front just because he... Oh, you reached 30. Right. Okay, wait, let's slow down. Slow it down. So catapults are going. 
Dude, the so. Reapers are kind of dope looking. Wow. Is that shit? Guys are kind of clean. Oh my, oh, my sword. <laughs> oh my goodness. My sword casters are killing your kings. Ooh. This looks really happy to be dying. You notice that? Nice. I think I'm winning. I th <gasps> Man. So I know it works. Uh, just get a whole bunch of kings is what I've noticed. Dang. One more round. I know. And I win. If you can pull it back sure. and win two win rounds. Bunch of these dudes. And a cactus. <laughs> Watch these cactuses just clean house. Um, yeah. There you go. Okay, cool. Uh, I will also um, do... You're going to copy me? Gunslinger? I want to push these guys up front. Then we'll just use some dudes with pick pickaxes. Why not? Steve from Minecraft. I know, pretty much. Alrighty. Sweet. Ready? Yeah, go. And go. Oh, man. Good job, Marksman. You're doing a trick. Oh. <laughs> just got stuff. You still have a line of them. I know. Come on, guys. But they're just walking towards Come on, guys. Them. Come on, guys. <laughs> oh, my God. Come on, guys. <laughs> Stop. No. Kill them. Shoot them. You have guns, too. Oh, my. Come on. What happened? Yes! I did not think I was going to win. This is dumb. Well, that was fun. That was fun. Actually, other than, getting, other than getting beat again. Yeah. That was probably understanding what the characters do would um, probably we help better. Move the camera. Like, also, the camera. I don't know why we were. We couldn't. We'll play something different next time. Yeah. Hopefully, something I'm good at. Yeah, someday. I'll get You're also going to graduate, though. Thanks for the reminder, Lauren. We're Not sad or anything. Really sad. Okay. I know. I'm aware. That's all we have for Gen 2 uh, Project Delta this week. Um, thank you, Garrett, for joining me and playing uh, Tab with me. And I hope you guys enjoy. I'll see you guys next week. See ya. Bye, guys. And that's the end of this episode of Gen 2. Make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to not miss our next relaxing episode. Yeah, see you guys next week. I just kind of want to keep relaxing. Me too. Wait, we, are we even able to stop like relaxing here? What do you mean? Like, can we leave like the episode? Why would you want to? Wait, so if we only live in this episode, what happens when like the bit ends? What? Garrett, what bit are you talking about? The bit that we always do. We're on the beach right now. We're, are Garrett, we? we've been living here for like the past 15 years. We have? What bit are you talking about? I mean, we film every once in a while because we're part-time actors, but like, okay. there's no bit right now, Garrett. Are right. you? Have you been taking a minute? Are you okay? I think so. The voices are coming back. <laughs>